fantasizing about some older men at the office. And her question was, do I even tell my husband about this or not? Now, I missed this segment on Friday because I was having some connection problems. But, Tammy, bring me up to speed here. What's going on in the office? Well, yeah. Hey, guys. Um, so, um, I <laughs> always found myself attracted to older men. Um, and there is uh, one in particular at work right now. And, you know, I would never do anything about it. I'm very happily married, um, actually, to a man my age. But, like, I would never, I just want to be clear, I would never, ever act on these thoughts or feelings or sometimes fantasy. Mm-hmm. And I was recently offered a freelance opportunity to work with that man. And, I mean, that's when we all talked on Friday, and I was really torn. It was like a great financial opportunity. It was wonderful for my resume and professional development, but I was not sure how that temptation would play in. And so I told my husband about just the opportunity. Like, hey, I might be able to work on this project. Here's what I would get paid. And he was so excited. He's like, you need to do it. There's no reason you shouldn't. This opportunity doesn't come along this often. The money's great. And that, so that is all I told him about the opportunity. I did not say who else was involved. When we're talking about yeah. fantasizing, what are we talking about here? I mean, you're talking about like when you're with your husband, you're thinking of this dude in intimate times or what exactly is yeah. fantasizing me? No, just sort of like more of a daydream frequently and it's not when i'm in the presence of my husband like that at all okay so you're you think he's an attractive man are you attracted to him yeah yes okay Hmm. um Hmm. and the thought here was do i tell my husband or was the thought here do i take the job both and so i did not tell my husband all about my co-worker um, I didn't think that was something he needed to know in this moment. Um, however, I did tell him about the opportunity, just like the strictly business part. And um, after talking through with him and sort of thinking over the weekend, I did accept that freelance project with, with this man. Okay. Uh, all right. Here, here's what drives me crazy sometimes about infidelity is when people say that they made a mistake. Oh, so you go into the office, you're already walking into a dangerous situation with this dude that you're attracted to. You're not just fantasizing about him. You're attracted to it. All right. So you could put a stop to that thing right here, right now, but you're not. So you're going to look back at this and you're going to go, that was the first mistake, right? Mm-hmm. And then lunch was the second mistake. These things aren't mistakes. They are a series of bad decisions. And when you call up the Burt Show, we say, like, we're going to talk to you like we're best friends. So if you're my best friend, I would say that you are setting yourself up, all right, for infidelity right now by making the first of a series of bad decisions. And when you do have an affair, do not call it a mistake because you could have stopped it this weekend. Well, I, I will not let it get to that. Uh-huh. Like, right. will, will, will not. Pinky swear. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, you say that, but you say that, but you're already dabbling in the dangerous part of it. Like, you not, like, this is where you should be setting up some boundaries right now, some borders right now. Look, I know I'm attracted to this guy, so why would you even risk your marriage to be in the same office where you're going to be around? I, look, go ahead and do what you want. But you are making a decision here. This is not going to be part of a mistake. Well, I think I've been really focused on how do I get my mindset not there and just focus on the work. And it it might take a little bit of extra mental power from me, but I I believe I'm capable of doing that. Okay. Hey, it's your call. I mean, here, uh oh, Kobe Mack wants to go. Kobe Mack wants to go to the Bible on you. Oh, (laughs) hey, hey, Kobe (laughs) Mack. Yo, 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 what up? How we living, Virtual fan? Go ahead, represent Jesus. Listen, yo, if we turn to the book of Matt, <laughs> chapter 8, verse 30, it says, if the hand calls you to sing, then cut it off. <laughs> right. And the good brother, the good brother has just said to some woman, yo, it can't be praised. 
I'm yeah, sorry. You gotta pray for a better phone, my yeah. <laughs> His sermon's kind of starting to sound like Satan, Satan took over. Satan <laughs> messing with his phone. Yeah. Some Look, backward uh, messaging there. Tammy, I'm gonna let you go. I'm just saying this. Look. You are setting. You are making bad decisions starting today, and you have to own that. Okay, if this gets out of hand, you got nobody to blame but yourself. That's all I'm saying. That's tough love from Burt Weiss. And I, I, I sincerely appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I just I think I want to be the bigger person here. Okay, you do that. Okay. <laughs> all right. Have a good Thank day. I think I've been clear on that. How I, oh, oh yeah. yeah, you guys got anything? On this? <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you I kind of ran. One over, I kind of yeah. ran. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got anything on this one? Yeah, I mean, no. The Burt sermon was good. Okay, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. You, you crushed it. <laughs> All right, Tammy. See ya. The Burt Show.